Dobar dan još jednom i dobrodošli na drugu sesiju naše današnje konferencije. Naša druga sesija je posvećena karijernom vođenju i savjetovanju u Evropi. Kao što smo već napomenuli u uvodnom delu i u prvoj sesiji, danas su sa nama i kolege iz više evropskih država, predstavnici Euro Guidance mreže, ali i karijerni praktičari, tako da ćemo u narednih u narednoj sesiji imati prilike da pričamo o različitim inicijativama u različitim evropskim državama, da čujemo neke od primera dobrih praksi. Mi smo upravo dodelili nagrade za naše nacionalno takmičenje, ali ovde imamo i primere koji su nagrađeni u drugim državama i koji će vam se predstaviti uskoro, ali ćemo govoriti i o nacionalnom takmičenju kao jednoj inicijativi i rogaj nas mreže i kako je do nje došlo, jer smo se mi praktično priključili već postojeći inicijativi koju su pokrenule druge države i drugi nacionalni Eurogajdans centri. Sesija će u većini biti na engleskom jeziku, osim uvodnog obraćanja, tako da na samom početku želeli smo da malo kažemo i nešto više o jubileju Eurogajdans mreže, o četvrt veka rada Eurogajdans mreže. Ja bih zato pozvao svoje drage koleginice Sofiju Petrović i Ivanu Vulić da nam ukratko kažu šta je to Eurogajdans mreža i koje su to rezultate postignuti u toku ovih četvrt veka. Izvolite. Hvala. Poštovani. Današnja konferencija je jedan od događaja kojim Euroguidance mreža obeležava četvrt veka svog rada. Euroguidance je evropska mreža za podršku karijernom vođenju i savjetunju, koja promoviše evropsku dimenziju karijernog vođenja i pruža relevantne informacije o karijernom vođenju i mobilnosti. Aktivnosti Euroguidance centra se sprovode kroz nekoliko nacionalnih Euroguidance centara koji postoje od 34 evropske države. U Republici Srbiji Euroguidance centar je pokrenut 2013. godine kao organizacijni deo fondacije Tempus. Euroguidance mreža je nastala 1992. godine u okviru evropskog programa Petra, a danas deluje kao deo Erasmus Plus programa i delimično se finansira iz sredstava Evropske unije, a delimično iz nacionalnog budžeta država članica mreže. U zavisnosti od nacionalnih prioriteta, aktivnosti Euroguidance centra se razlikuje od države do države, ali svi centri imaju dva osnovna cilja. Promocije evropske dimenzije karijernog vođenja i pruženje kvalitetnih informacija o karijernom vođenju i mobilnosti. Kao što je koleginica rekla, ove godine Euroguidance mreža slavi svoj 25. rođendan, a u stvari za prethodnih 25 godina se promenilo dosta toga u mnogim sferama, pa tako i u oblasti karijernog vođenja, koja je zapravo glavna tema Eurogajnes mreže. I među vremenu je značaj celoživotnog vođenja prepoznat kroz dve rezolucije Saveta Evrope. Razvijeno je jako puno alata, zatim je donesen veći broj nacionalnih strategija, a za sve to vreme Eurogajnes mreža u celini kao takva, kroz svoje nacionalne centre, pružala je podršku razvoju sistema, posebno kroz razmenu dobrih praksi i međusobno učenje među evropskim državama. S tim u vezi pokrenuto se i mnoge nove aktivnosti međunarodne saradnje, koje su sada već kroz godine postale i deo tradicije Eurogajnas mreže. Tako je, na primjer, 2005. godine pokrenut pekogranični seminar za karijerne praktičare, pokrenula su ga tri centra, a onda su se toj inicijativi svake od narednih godina priključivale nove zemlje i sve veći broj zemalja, tako da je poslednji prekogranični seminar, koji je prethodna dva dana održavan baš u ovoj istoj sali, bio zajednički organizovan od strane 11 centara i na njemu je učestvovalo oko 80 učesnika koji su imale prilike da, pored obraćanja evropskih eksperata iz oblasti celoživotnog vođenja, učestvuju na čak 15 radionica koje su predstavljale primere dobre prakse iz svih ovih zemalja učesnica. Eurogajnes mreža ne podržava samo međusobno učenje među karijernim praktičarima iz različitih država, već i među samim Eurogajnes centrima. Tako je, na primjer, nacionalno takmičenje dobrih praksi, čiju ste ceremoniji dodele od u Srbiji upravo prisustovali, 
To je još jedna od inicijativa Euroguidance centara koje se vremenom priključivo sve veći broj država i o tome ćemo zapravo govoriti u ovoj sesiji, o tome će nam kolege iz Češke, Slovačke i Mađarske uskoro reći više u svojom narodnom izlaganju. Svaki od ovih centara organizuje nacionalne konferencije, tako da uskoro, nakon današnje konferencije, očekujemo konferenciju i centara u Portugalu, u Austriji, Češkoj Republici i drugim državama i nadamo se da će kao i prethodne godine i neki od praktičara čiji su primeri nagrađeni moći da učestvuju na nekom od ovih događaja. U narednim izlaganjima ćemo od kolega iz Euroguidance mreže čuti više o njihovom radu i o karijernom vođenju u njihovim državama I nadamo se da će Euroguidance mreža nastaviti ovaj put koji traje već 25 godina i nastaviti da podržava razvoj sistema karijernog vođenja i savjetovanja širom Evrope. Hvala. Hvala puno. So, we can switch into English now. And as my colleague Sofia has just announced, uh, the next, next session, uh, in the next session, we will talk about the National Guidance Awards in uh, three countries, uh, in Czech Republic, Slovakia, and Hungary. And uh, I'm really happy that my dear colleagues from the Euroguidance Network, uh, uh, Agnes uh, Ceskuti, uh, Petr Čalush, and uh, Ladislav Ostroha are here today with us, so they will tell us how it actually, this initiative uh, became first and how it grew and how they organize competitions in their own countries. So, dear colleagues, you know, the floor is yours. Dobrý den. Um, já budu mluvit česky, protože si rozumíme jako Slovani všichni, takže to nebude anglicky. Mám voda, má voda, mám vodu. Um, Takže se rozumíme. Ne? So, OK, I will talk English, OK. But we, we should try to talk uh, also Slavic languages together. Uh, um, I would like to say that I am very happy to be here. I am here all week. And maybe I will stay here because it's so nice. Uh, so friendly colleagues and uh, a nice country. It's my first time here. And I am, it's amazing, the, this town, for me. Very nice. Um, and um, it's everything is thanks to Euroguidance. So I would like to promote Euroguidance by one, one sentence only, uh, because I'm working for Euroguidance two years. And um, I would like to say that uh, also this event, this opportunity is an exchange of good ideas among countries. So we are all here thanks to Euroguidance. <laughs> So it's a little bit promotion. And um, I think a uh, second sentence how to promote your guidance is that it will be better and better because we will have a better future and uh, for next three years. So I am very lucky and we will have more national awards and more cross-border seminars and more conferences and so on. So it's a it's a good news for me and f I hope for you also. Um, uh, national efforts, it's an idea which is uh, growing and growing through, through the Europe. It was started nine years ago uh, in the head, heads of my colleague before me in Euroguidance Center. Very nice and clever people. They um, started to uh, collect good practice by the trick, and the trick is award. Because the main aim is to bring people together, to network to you together, uh, to recognize good practice. The aim is to support quality of guidance services, to promote career guidance, because in my countries, so we have so much problems that nobody knows what is it, career counseling. All, all knows just psychologists or doctors or teachers, but nobody knows who is career gu guidance counselor, what is it, what is this person is, uh, how important it is. And in some countries in Europe, they know about it, but in my country still we are on the way. 
So the national award is the, is the tool how to develop our system in my country, in Czech Republic, and how to do it from the bottom up. So from the practice, from the ex experiential, and from, from the organizations to build the system, to, to show what is the best, and other people copy these things, it's, and we like it that uh, they copy it, and it's, it's uh, spreading through the regions, and to the other countries like Serbia and so on. So it's the aim and what we learned uh, through this nine years uh, of the efforts, we 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 working together with Slovakia mainly each year and it's very nice for us. We are very close countries. I still think that we are only one country together, but okay, it's not true, but for me it's still, that. But it's good because we have European cooperation now with Slovakia. It's very nice cooperation. And this national efforts, it's a common job of our two national, uh, national centers, Czech and Slovak. And uh, we are inviting others like Bulgaria sometimes and Hungary, it's good, and Serbia. And I would like to invite uh, also Portugal and uh, Croatia. I hope that Mia will join us also <laughs> till 2020 and it will be more European prize, like not just national, but more European award. It's my dream, but maybe it's possible or not, but the main aim is to collect, you, you can see that everything is translated to English and we shared the last year uh, practices, it's, it's your work or some, some of you, so we we sharing it in New Europe. So it's uh, it's a collection of good practices from Serbia, Hungary, Czech Republic, Slovakia, and we share it through the 34 Euro Guidance Centers across Europe, and they can learn from you. They can use your idea, so you are famous in Europe. So it's a European ever somehow. And we talked in the Tallinn in network meeting about how we improve this collecting good practices in European level. And I think Euroguidance is the, the main European platform for this uh, exchange because it's our task to exchange experience. Okay, so a few words about the Czech, uh, Czech uh, efforts. I, we, we, uh, you, um, uh, we'll, sh we'll see one uh, winner here. It is uh, two boys from Pilsen. And I, I think you know Pilsen because uh, nobody knows Czech Republic, but all people in America also and China knows Pilsen. So you will see the good example, not the beer, but uh, guidance counseling service. Uh, and this is, a, this, is a, this is winners of national awards, and they are here. So it's an outcome of the awards. They, they were trainers in cross-border, these winners. Uh, also, we have in an Insight newsletter, I hope that you read each month, or not each month, each, each, uh, twice, a twice a year, you read Insight newsletter. It's a Euroguidance European newsletter. And we have uh, winners of national prizes in this newsletter. So we try to promote it, and I also promoted it in Czech radio, for example. So it's in, it's in public, it's recognition of the good practice. We try to go through media, to have a press conferences around it in my country, and to, to show, to, it's, it's an award more than the diploma, the certificates. It's maybe better that the people are well known and they are, in, they are inspiring to others. So it's a word for us. And for example, we have public employment services like uh, contributions to the award from the public employment services, which are very active, some, some of them only, but still it's okay, it's very nice. Uh, we have some, from some schools and it's growing and growing. The last year we had contribution from one school and now we have five schools. So we see 
that's growing, the idea is growing, the people would like to share more and more. So more schools we have, we have uh, from the beginning, we have very strong participation of NGOs because they bring innovative practices in my country because the state is a little bit slow, maybe slower than, than your state when, I, when I, uh, you are so advanced in, in uh, Serbia in your guidance system and supporting guidance. Uh, maybe quicker than uh, than my country. Uh, so the NGOs are very active and still are, they are winners of our prizes. A lot of NGOs which uh, are providers of guidance, counseling and new innovative methods. So we have a lot of inspiration from Scandinavia, from UK, from other countries through the mobility because you also, you also be, uh, part of the Erasmus Plus and mobility among guidance counselors and learn from other countries. And we have influence. And also Euroguidance still, we, we try to invite trainers from abroad. So these NGOs are very uh, inspired by uh, other countries and they are, then they are winners in, in my country, these uh, innovative NGOs. So it's a situation in, in our country. And um, I think, that's all, and I would like to, I would like to send my say, send place to to Slovakia. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, my name is Vladislav Ostroha. I'm from uh, Eurogad in Slovakia, and I'll just try to pick up on what Petr said because he said pretty much everything. So it's it's. I just add some. <laughs> I just add some some comments. Uh, National Guidance Award, uh, National Career Guidance Award in Slovakia originated nine years ago uh, with the purpose to, to identify and collect uh, example of good practices on how to help pupils and young students uh, with the transition to, to the labor market. But the concept has evolved ever since and uh, we now have contribution coming from, uh, from across sectors, so let's say from public employment services and from practitioners from schools and NGOs, private, private sectors. So it's really growing, as you said. And also from all around Slovakia, because as you may imagine, regions in Slovakia are kind of different. The practitioners in different regions work in different environments, in different conditions, and it's really important to, to get to know them, what are the obstacles that they are facing. So it's the contribution, the contribution comes from, uh, from all around Slovakia. So we have now really wide range of, of contributions and let's say uh, applicants. Uh, just briefly, I will, I will just uh, go through the, the process. We have first uh, collect, uh, collecting period, then we move to assessment phase when uh, the contributions are assessed by the board of experts. Uh, according to set, sets of criteria, let's say formal quality, efficiency or impact, uh, ethical norms, and then we have a conference, conference such as this. And uh, the conference is about, firstly, about recognition, but also about community, because, because we must really take care of our community, because you, as guidance practitioner, form kind of, form kind of community. And, uh, well, you may imagine that in Slovakia, community is quite narrow. So we need to really take care of them and bring them together, engage them in the conversation, engage them in dialogue, because that's how you improve, that's how we improve career guidance services by, by exchanging ideas, by exchanging experience, and having conversation on, on various topics. Um, and it's not only, let's say, one-off activity, because we also, um, we tend to bring the winners or awarded with us to international conference and seminars, as we did this year, we brought uh, this year's winner to to, uh, to throw a workshop at the cross-border seminar. And we also have winner from, uh, from uh, I guess, last year or uh, the, the year before uh, present here with us. So it's really, we kind of try to, to work systematically with the awarded and with the winners. And uh, the next year is kind of special for us. We are very proud and very, very, we are very excited about uh, having a 10th anniversary of a Career Guidance Award in Slovakia and in Czech Republic alike. So it's really, it's really great. It's, 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 it's a very special moment for us. And I can only hope we will able to, 
to host the conference as good and as, as well organized as this one. So it's really big thanks to Marco and the whole Your Guidance team for, for, stunning, for stunning job. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just move over to, to Agnes. Yeah, thanks. Okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Agnes. I'm the representative of uh, Euroguidance Hungary. And also thank you for the invitation. It's very nice to be here. We didn't expect the rain, but it's okay. So we had plenty of sunshine in the previous two days. Uh, I would like to tell you a couple of words about how we organized uh, this National Career Guidance Award in Hungary. We are basically the newcomers. You are the forefathers. <laughs> and we are the newcomers because uh, the first and only so far uh, Career Guidance Award was organized in Hungary last year. And uh, basically our aim was to collect as many good examples from the field of orientation and guidance as possible. And also we wanted to see what kind of guidance services there are in the field. And uh, we also wanted to have examples from both the fields of education and labor, as you did. And uh, basically we followed what the, uh, the Slovakian and the Czech colleagues did. We uh, received the templates, we received the descriptions, we had lots of uh, discussions about how to organize it. And of course we had some modifications, we changed some uh, things according to our needs. And uh, we were very much surprised because uh, we received 30 applications and that, that was a huge number for the first time. We were very, very happy. And also uh, there were some uh, other surprises as well. Basically that all counties in Hungary, in Hungary there are 19 counties and all counties represented themselves in the competition and also all fields of guidance services. So we were very happy and the biggest surprise what was, uh, Petr has just mentioned that uh, actually the biggest number of applications came from NGOs and that was uh, something new in, in Hungary so we were quite happy about that. Uh, we received uh, different topics, different topics on orientation and guidance. The most popular ones, uh, or the most popular topic was to present uh, guidance services, methodology, uh, different tools, different kind of services, and services targeted to uh, different uh, groups, such as primary school students or secondary school students or, or disadvantaged groups. We also had uh, uh, evaluators. We had a committee of three experts. One of them is a university professor in Hungary on guidance. The second one is an independent uh, guidance expert currently living in, uh, in Germany. And the third expert uh, was the representative of a national authority on adult and vocational education in Hungary. And all of them evaluated all the projects and we, and they selected, not we, but they selected uh, the winners. And actually it was a very, very strong competition. And uh, the difference in points between the top three projects was only 1%. So we decided to, to award not only the best three, but also some other projects because uh, there were so many good examples. Uh, we also had a ceremony and we organized it uh, together with a, a good practice seminar. So perhaps that could be a good idea to follow. And uh, during this good practice seminar, 18 projects could present their results, their tools, their activities. So it was actually a networking activity for the, for the guidance uh, practitioners to meet each other, to learn from each other. And uh, we, we believe that it was a good example for, uh, or a good opportunity for them to, to meet each other, to learn from each other, and um, actually to, to carry on this idea of, of, uh, guide, of the of the guidance award and uh, in the future we would like to organize this uh, award every second year in order not to be boring <laughs> too boring for the for the services and also to to leave them enough time to come up with something new to have time to develop their tools and methods and such so next year there will be a guidance award in Hungary definitely Thank you, uh, and thank you for giving us the, the overview of how the National Guidance Awards uh, in, in the Euroguidance Network evolved 
and how you evaluate your and what are uh, good examples in your countries. Uh, we will have more opportunity to talk about the guidance systems in uh, the different uh, countries that belong to Euro Guidance Network and that are present with us today in the room. But now we have uh, an example of the winners of the best uh, uh, practices uh, awards in uh, one of your countries, in Czech Republic. So now it's my honor to invite uh, Mr. Uh, Michal pa uh, Parlasek and Lukas Lucek, who will present uh, their uh, Info Carriera portal in Czech Republic and who are the winners of the Czech Republic uh, Guidance Awards. So the floor is yours. Sorry. Okay, um, hello, good morning. I'm very happy to be here and to have this chance to present you something we do. Um, if at least one person gets inspired by what I have now a chance to show you, I will be the happiest guy in Belgrade. Um, well, it's going to be my turn because uh, my, my colleague uh, Lukáš is too scared to be here. <laughs> and, uh, but, <laughs> but here's a nice guy and uh, if you have anything to discuss, uh, weather is quite rainy today for some sightseeing so we will be available all the afternoon here. So that's the important thing uh, to say. And yeah, uh, the most important thing about uh, our background has been already mentioned by Petr, so it's Pilsen. Actually, I cannot calculate how much beer we drank till we built this, but uh, it was a lot. <laughs> well, this is not the example of good practice. Uh, so, yeah, uh, our institution, Info Carrera, it's a part of a slightly bigger institution which is uh, uh, devoted to teachers' training. It provides uh, training for the teachers in various kinds of uh, stuff, languages, ICT, you name it, really, that's a whole variety of, uh, of training. Uh, so that's why we have quite close um, um, attitude or cl close uh, uh, cooperation with teachers. And that's why we decided to offer uh, this workshop for schools that come to our place. Uh, it's for free for them because we are financed by the regional county, regional authority. Uh, so this is what we uh, what we offer and I think this, this seminar this workshop is nothing that much special really but there are some certain crucial things that make it work and um, I would like to present them to you if there is any question ask uh, if uh, you are afraid to ask this audience ask me later on uh, so the name of the workshop is called Who Am I? Uh, it was uh, designed for the teenagers mostly, uh, 14, 15 year olds thinking about their um, secondary school, older teenagers, maybe around 19, 20, thinking about universities uh, or job, getting a job. But a couple of weeks ago, we tried for the younger uh, students, uh, pupils basically, 11, 12 years old and it had an impact too it was very interesting uh, it worked and a couple of uh, workshops we had at the university as well but not, not, not so much yes so uh, what is based on uh, the workshop is uh, <laughs> is really introspective uh, it goes really deep inside every person so it's based on self-exploration, self-knowledge, reflection of that, uh, and also presentation. That's why the first crucial thing is to really set up friendly, helpful atmosphere. Uh, if this fails, the workshop fails. So 
there are certain rules. Uh, we uh, want every person in a class to agree and to be okay with. Uh, so, well, the rule can be something like there are no wrong answers. If it's something your opinion, say it. But try to be positive, not criticize others. Try to be hel helpful, active, respect the others. Uh, so this is the uh, first um, crucial point. And of course, the seminars are, in f we try to make it informal. So it's not like me standing ahead of others, but I try to be involved with the group. Yeah, so uh, that's it. Uh, I, again, yeah, maybe it's really important. That's why it's, it's, it's why it's there. Safe environment, I spoke about it. Everyone has got a time to think. Uh, about the things uh, that are important for him, for her. And really, the maximum number of pupils, students in a one group uh, shouldn't be higher than 12, because then uh, there is less time, attention, work uh, for this individual stuff. During the day. So uh, what we want to do is empowerment. I don't know if you are uh, familiar with uh, this term. Basically, we want a person to be active, not to wait for some solution for him from some smart person. Here it is, do that, do that. No, think about it, what you can do. Uh, Self-management is probably quite similar. And also, it should be personalized. Every person gets his own stuff during the seminar, uh, something like a map, a plan maybe, that he or she can work on afterwards. Yes, so how does it work? Um, firstly, uh, after we agreed on, on the rules, uh, one thing that never happened, but um, we are ready to, to use that. If someone is not OK with the rules, respect, being helpful, uh, positive, uh, we ask the person not to be in the class. Well, no one chooses it because um, image of waiting three hours in the corridor is probably not so much tempting. Well, our corridors are quite fine, but still, no one ever chooses that. Yes, so uh, after that, we um, want everyone to well, describe or to say what the word career really means to, to him. What is it? What other words came to mind when someone says career? So this is how this individual um, map plan is being, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> uh, being uh, done. So uh, then we start mapping. Uh, I will show you the, the example, very nice one, I think, uh, where there is the uh, person, uh, picture of the person, and some really strengths, things that the person is good at around him. And from this map, uh, we, uh, we then go on to competences, to some uh, kind of universal thing that can uh, be used on a labor market. So, very important thing is that everyone uh, can see a story behind the strength, behind the thing uh, that he or she is good at. And this story of the success of the strengths goes into the competence. And that's, I think, it's quite a crucial moment too. And of course, uh, then it's also about the uh, presentation and uh, it all finishes up with um, uh, this personal portfolio, maybe, as a source of, or maybe uh, some kind of uh, place where all these proofs of abilities, skills, competences are placed. It can be a, a gallery of the mobile phone. It can be a YouTube channel. It can be really anything. And of course, CV. And I must say that, um, uh, Europass uh, CV form, we use that because it's very useful. Many teenagers uh, are really um, a little bit disappointed when uh, they have this typical structure of a CV because there is not so much, so many things that came 
uh, right there. Uh, job experience, I don't know how in Serbia, but um, job work is slightly illegal in our country, so there is not much space for, uh, uh, for that. So Europass is great because there is quite a lot about competences, about uh, this reflection of, of uh, good uh, uh, successes maybe in that. So when they see the Europass being uh, filled with something, it's a thing, it's, it, it's very good. Yes, finally, feedback and evaluation. Uh, we want to hear students or pupils uh, what was helpful for them, what they want to, what the next step they're gonna make will be. And of course, we try to uh, communicate with the school afterwards and recommend maybe some other activities they, they, that can follow the, the workshop. Okay, so um, take a look. Uh, these are the Dixit cars, maybe, maybe you know that. We used that at the beginning to somehow start thinking what the career is for the person. So usual questions are, uh, find a card which shows or which shows some emotion you feel when you say my career or what my career is about now. Try to find a card. Uh, second card, uh, the instruction is find a card that uh, shows you where you want to be in two years, one year, in the future, how you want it, uh, how you want to have it in some future time. Yes, so this is uh, that. Now you can see that the students uh, already started mapping. So uh, I don't know if visible. These are the maps. Students are usually in the middle. And there are symbols of their successes, symbols of their strengths, symbols of uh, the stories they were thinking that, are, uh, that they managed something. Yeah. So mapping. Uh, of course, very important thing. Uh, this was very introspective part of the seminar or workshop. But then comes some kind of feedback from the others. Uh, it should be safe, and it's, uh, it's done using, I don't know if you can see that, these are the post-it papers. So there is some kind of, uh, of, well, the instruction is write the strengths of your friend next to you, what you admire, maybe, what you think this person is really good at. And really important thing is that this is like a label from uh, somebody else. And again, students or pupil decides if he or she agrees with that or not, if it should be placed here or somewhere else, or maybe it shouldn't be in a map. Yeah. Okay, and there is, well, discussing. Yeah. So this is the map. Uh, I think the person uh, really looks like a very creative one. Uh, uh, maybe uh, I will speak about this empathy, probably you understand what's that. This is like uh, helps to everyone, uh, helps to everyone, yeah. Uh, there is one very important aspect of this career guidance and this workshop that we try to take into account and I do believe it's similar in Serbia, parents. Uh, sometimes it's the really hardest thing to involve parents to this career thinking of their children. And in this workshop, before the break, uh, we ask uh, students to take their cell phones and to write a simple uh, message to their parents uncles, grannies, someone close to them, someone who really knows them, with a very simple question, what am I good at? What do you think I am good at? Uh, results are sometimes very similar, but well, our ambition is not to work with that so much. It should only start some kind of uh, communication 
later on because usually it's quite unusual when children call or write uh, things like that to the parents. So we believe that, that it somehow involves parents a little bit. Yeah, so you can see that probably the girl got this answer and again, it's, it's her uh, uh, choice if she accepts it or not. Yeah, so uh, that's the map. After the map, uh, we try uh, or we uh, well um, uh, try to help students to define uh, these strengths, qualities, skills into more universal thing called competence. And for that, we use the uh, something like a national framework of these soft competences, maybe this is the list. And uh, yeah, uh, the outcome is that from maybe some uh, skills, qualities, they can find some uh, competence that they can really use and work on furthermore uh, on maybe some job market on some, something else. So. The end of the, the activity is uh, thinking about, okay, what can be the very first small step forward to improve in this competence? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, some more uh, pictures. Maybe some kind of summary uh, of, of this workshop. Uh, we really try hard to speak with particular teacher before the seminar, before the schools actually come. Uh, we ask questions like, are you going to um, some job fair or uh, educational fair? Uh, what are you going to tell students or pupils before? Uh, what do you want us to tell them? So we try to really customize every workshop to the needs of the particular school. And it's something like a contract with the school, but also at the very beginning of the uh, workshop, the same importance for me has got a uh, contract with the students. I discuss with them what the school wants, but I ask them, what do you think is most important for you? And if it's not the same, I always tend to uh, help students uh, I'm the, just not so much care about what school think about that. Well, yeah. So uh, again, maybe for the first th a third time, uh, rules that every person agrees with at the beginning, and throughout the workshop, the focus is on experiences and experience from experiences, maybe proofs compet of competences. Uh, during this uh, workshop, everyone should know the precise moment how uh, he or she used the competence. Right? And I already mentioned feedback uh, from students to the lecture and then back to school. That's, that's how we do that. I hope I, I just still on the time. Yeah, okay, good. So maybe if you want to ask, uh, I'll be really, to, uh, really happy to answer. If you don't want to ask now, I'll be available all, all afternoon long. So um, it would be really nice to speak with you. If, well, maybe my question, is there anyone inspired at least a little? Can you raise your hands? <gasps> yeah, wow. I am not the happiest guy in Belgrade. I'm the happiest guy in Serbia. Thank you. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah, maybe Just later for yeah. the discussion. Thank you very much. And uh, it was really uh, not great to see, you know, uh, an example, but also to hear you uh, that you are so in inspired by what you do. And you, I think that went also to the people, so I hope we will see many of them asking you some questions. We'll have the time in the discussion so we can, we can follow up, maybe we can 
uh, move to the next good practice example from your neighboring country. So we now go to Slovakia, and now we will be able to hear something more about the programs and tools for career guidance of youth in Slovakia. And our colleague Tomax Perlak uh, from the Association for Career Guidance and Development is here, and he will share some really interesting examples from the activities done in Slovakia. So, Thank you very much. This will be less fun, but also much shorter. Uh, I work as a service manager at our employment office, and I work at the unit of uh, guidance and counseling and training. And today I wanted to share with you what we do with young people at the labor offices. Uh, so, some very brief introduction. Uh, we currently have 230 uh, guidance uh, counselors uh, who are a second level counselors. Those are not job mediators, so not everyone goes to them. And we recently hired and trained 60 specialized counselors who work with uh, young people. We have yearly uh, turnout of more than 100,000 clients. Most of them are long term unemployed. And how do we motivate young people to come? We created a special career guidance program uh, and we pay them for euros for every meeting. You see, we don't know what to do with all this ESF money. Uh, one problem, a key challenge we faced when we tried to implement this career guidance program into our employment services is how to sell career guidance to our financiers, to our board. I wish our board was this young. Uh, the problem is that what they see uh, usually is this, statistics, outcomes, how many people did you place, and we wanted to somehow pass them a message that Career guidance and counseling is not necessarily only about this. So how we try to do it? We try to build our career guidance program on the logic of learning outcomes of guidance. We took inspiration from different uh, European frameworks for career management skills and defined four areas of employability factors uh, that you can see here. Identity and motivation, strength and potential, horizons and planning, networks and relations. Uh, how does it look concretely? What are these employability factors or learning outcomes? In order for them to work, uh, it has to be knowledge, skills, competences, beliefs, or career competencies that are clearly linked to success on the labor market and that are, as far as possible, observable, measurable. I have to slow down. Uh, a, here are some examples of them. So uh, it is from these four areas. For example, I like, I, I, is the person is able to describe his or her own motivation and values related to work. Uh, he's able to explain to her friends, colleagues, potential employers why he, is look, she or she is looking for employment in this field. Is able to find information from different sources on the labor markets. Uh, so small things divided into these four factors, and this is what this is what it looks like. It's in Slovakian, and you see it's a sort of test, a red test before and after the program. The career guidance counselor checks the current situation of the person and then evaluates evaluates uh, the outcome. Very important thing is. Uh, that the career guidance program that we constructed is built around these four areas of factors. Uh, it's 35 hours with several group sessions uh, and uh, several individual meetings. And we use, we have a methodical guide for our counselors that uses very, very well known guidance practices, RIASEC. Uh, uh, and different personality approaches, also uh, uh, experiential learning, etc. Now, this is the fun part. We are piloting uh, uh, on a very, very small scale uh, a serious game called Job Labyrinth, and I cannot show it here to you, but it's supposed to attract needs to the system and to this career guidance program. Uh, and it is connected through this game. They build their own profile uh, through different activities that helps them connect to the labor market and helps them think or motivates them to think about their career and only a screenshot. So you see it's very simple, very easy, but it's, it has elements of RPG. And if you are interested, please write a message to me. 
we don't know how this will work out, but uh, uh, let's, let's see. We built this through an Erasmus, small Erasmus Plus project with Italians, and the Hungarians are doing the coding. Uh, now, the last thing. We work in an organization that is very heavily uh, regulated by different uh, bureaucratic uh, rules. I think you know these people who work in school, uh, educational sector, and employment offices. And I think I'm convinced that it is our role as uh, best managers, but most of all of career guidance counselors to bring some uh, a human touch. So this is, I think, our fight. This is our vision to make uh, public employment services more human and more uh, client-centered. So thank you very much for your attention. And, uh, thank you, Thomas, very much. And uh, now we heard some of the examples. Uh, from the uh, participating countries, but there are even more countries uh, that are participating. So I'm really happy that our colleague uh, Maria Yashova from Slovak Republic will now join uh, Peter and Agnes. And I would also like to invite my dear colleagues uh, Elia and uh, Elia and Joao from Portugal to join us. Uh, also here for the panel, and our dear colleague, and also one of the evaluators at our national uh, awards, uh, Mia from Croatia. So what we will actually do, okay, so what we will actually do, since I have been sitting there all day, I will uh, do a little walking and talking, a bit of exercise, but I also uh, want to place my dear colleagues in a situation where I ask the question like a teacher and they are to answer. So the idea of our panel, uh, of our last panel in this session is to present some uh, of the guidance systems throughout Europe so we can share our, uh, how we are organizing uh, career guidance in different uh, countries, how counselors are trained, how the system is organized, uh, are there some good examples and some good practices that they would also like to share, so we can all talk about how guidance is organized throughout Europe, and all, of course I would like to invite you in the last part in the discussion for you to also take part and ask questions, but also maybe have some comments or additional, additional uh, comments. So uh, in the first round I would like to ask all of our, our, our uh, colleagues to sh give just a short introduction into the guidance systems of your countries. So maybe in a couple of minutes you can just briefly state how guidance is organized in your countries and who are the main actors and how the, uh, how the services are provided at national or local level. So we can maybe uh, start from Portugal. So maybe Portugal can break the ice and we can hear them first. Thank you, Marcos, and uh, we are very, it's for us a big pleasure to be here, and we want to thank Marcos and uh, the wonderful teams for this conference and for all these um, two days. Um, as you can see, we are... Um, you can see here also. Does? We are in the end of Europa, and uh, it was... Uh, a long trip, but it was a pleasure to be here, and we will speak uh, only a little bit about our career guidance in Portugal and some examples of our our world. João will continue. So, uh, hello to everybody. Uh, thanks to uh, Tempus and all the stuff for the friendly uh, meeting and the friendly times you provided to us. So, uh, in Portugal, uh, uh, you can find uh, guidance uh, at uh, uh, four different providers, which are uh, centers qualifica, that are centers for adults, um, 
and dedicated to uh, vocation and, and education and uh, training. Uh, you can find it also at public uh, employment uh, services. You can find it uh, in schools and uh, in university career departments. Um, Centros Qualifica and university career uh, departments are uh, much smaller than the other two. Um, mostly, uh, the biggest part of this provision uh, is done um, in schools and in public uh, employment service. Uh, so these uh, slides uh, it uh, shows a little bit these two main providers. Uh, so you uh, have uh, um, thousand um, practitioners uh, in schools uh, at public employment services. Uh, you will find uh, 300. Uh, their background are uh, in schools exclusively um, psychologists work there. And uh, in the public employment services, you have uh, also um, practitioners from uh, the sociology uh, area. Um, both provide uh, or um, both provisions of, of guidance are uh, established by law. Um, first, the um, public employment services established it in uh, 1962, uh, and uh, the. Um, provision of, of guidance in schools uh, were done by a uh, decree law uh, at, in uh, 91. Um, both use uh, uh, an approach based in uh, or a multi-tier approach. Uh, this uh, has two aspects, uh, important ones, um, that uh, we divide the intervention um, to ensure uh, that the target groups that most need it will receive it with the highest uh, intensity. So uh, it's not uh, the same for, uh, for everybody and you divide it for uh, this, re this re uh, reason. Uh, you also have uh, other important uh, motive in the uh, previous slide. <laughs> um, that is, this permits that you um, provide the intervention uh, with a preemptive basis uh, instead of a remediative basis. So um, this means that public employment system that you adopt uh, um, active uh, policies uh, of employment and uh, in schools uh, you really try to that these technicians have a proactive uh, intervention, a preemptive intervention uh, rather than uh, a remediative one um, after the problem uh, appears. Uh, the main features of career guidance, please don't read school psychology only because we are talking about PES 2, you have to remind that. Uh, the main features uh, um, in uh, the educational system and uh, in PES, at, these are f services that are free of charge. Um, again, uh, I told in the previous slides, um, the, um, the, the, the psychologists, uh, are, uh, they work in the school. Um, this is done on a voluntary basis um, from the user point of view, of course. Um, both educational system and PESH. And uh, you will find it in the all school levels. Um, um, after the compulsory school that goes uh, uh, until 18 years or the um, 12th grade. Um, you also have it in the, the universities. Uh, and another feature, uh, important one, uh, it is embedded at schools. Like I said, you have the, the, the psychologist works um, in the school and it reports to the school principal. Um, and uh, you have, uh, basically in Portugal, you have um, clusters of schools and you have at least one psychologist per cluster. Um, and for now, enough. <laughs> we can go. Okay. Yeah. So now we can move from Portugal to Slovakia maybe and hear how system is organized in Slovakia.
Okay, thank you for the word. Uh, greetings from Slovakia. My name is Maria Yashova and I work for Euro Guidance Center. And I'll, I haven't prepared such an impressive uh, presentation as your colleagues, so I'll have to entertain you only by, by talking, but I'll try my best. Uh, I think many uh, similarities are between countries in Europe, and I will probably uh, say some very similar things as you've heard. Uh, before. Uh, in Slovakia, uh, the career guidance is provided mainly in two sectors. Uh, uh, it's uh, in education and in public employment serv services. You've heard uh, about uh, the services uh, from Tomasz Perlak, who uh, talked uh, before, and he briefed me that I should say that these public employment services are very innovative and progressive, and I'll tell you that. Okay, Tomasz is glad. Okay, I'm glad too. Uh, so I won't talk about these services. Uh, I'll, I'll move to the educational sector. Uh, we have a, a current system of ca career guidance uh, is, uh, is, was established a long time ago. It was in 1950s and uh, the, the system as we have it today is um, uh, very similar to that. But it, it's, uh, there were some developments and some changes but the basis uh, uh, is from there that time. Uh, we have educational counselors in schools, in primary schools and also in secondary schools, but these educational uh, counselors are teachers and they don't have any specific uh, training to be career guidance counselors. And they have to deal also not only with career uh, guidance issues, but they have to deal with a lot of different issues like educational problems, behavioral problems of pupils, maybe even some uh, uh, problems in families. So it's very difficult to uh, provide uh, uh, these, all these kind of services in one person, but they have the support of uh, centers. These centers are called uh, centers of educational and psychological counseling and prevention. There are around 80 uh, centers like this around Slovakia and these centers provide methodological support for the, for the educational counselors. Uh, here in these centers, uh, the staff is ma are mainly uh, psychologists, but there are also some uh, special educators and uh, social workers. Uh, what else? We we have also school psychologists, but that's not an uh, that's not an obligatory uh, person uh, in in school. So uh, there are some schools they have school psychologists, and some schools that are without this support. These school psychologists are. Um, their their job or what they are interested in they they don't have uh, some reg uh, regulars they ca they they can uh, provide programs of career guidance or they can provide programs of prevention it's up to them they don't they are not uh, obligated to uh, provide for example the career guidance it's up to them. Uh, what else can I say? Oh, uh, maybe about some new developments in Slovakia in the field of career guidance. Right now we have a new document that was issued by our Ministry of Education and it's called Relearning Slovakia and it should be a basis for some kind of reform in the sector of education. And uh, we are glad that uh, some of our colleagues uh, were able to contribute to this uh, to this. Uh, concept or to this program and uh, they uh, the, the, the chapter of career guidance counsel, counseling is uh, is the part of the chapter of uh, vocational and educational uh, training and uh, in this chapter uh, they try to um, uh, emphasize that the career guidance should be a part of uh, of elementary schools and secondary and upper secondary schools. Uh, they, they, um, the reform should be that the career management skills should be implemented right, right into the educational programs. They want to implement the world of work uh, and the contact with the world of work right into the curricula. 
and uh, also the professionalization of career guidance services is a part of this chapter. So these are the new developments in Slovakia, but we hope that this uh, paper reform will get into practice. So uh, keep our uh, keep fingers crossed for us. Thanks. Okay, so we can continue the journey, and if we needed the plane, a plane to go from Portugal to Slovakia, now we can just move a bit, you know, across the border, and uh, we can do it by car or even in foot. Actually, by, by walk, yes. Yeah, by walk. Actually, uh, two years ago we had a cross-border seminar, so we were in Czech Republic, and then we went to Austria during the seminar just you know to say that guidance is crossing borders so better now it's your time to tell us about the guidance in Czech Republic okay so um, maybe uh, I will start with information if you would like to know something uh, very interesting from our system please ask uh, the, my friends Lukáš and Michal and, and Martina and others, because we have a lot of Czech participants here. I also looking for Pavla. She's from Career Guidance Center from Masaryk University. And they are so best uh, in, in my country, this career center in Masaryk University. So she's here. Maybe she's walking, no, but yeah, I hope she's still here. So please ask them during the break. They are sitting here and, and also because they know better than me what is our system, because uh, we have no system. Uh, we have just good practices. Uh, yes, we have very old traditional system from the Austria monarchy, maybe. I, I don't know which, how long it is. It is um, public employment services and schools. It is our system and nothing more. And uh, so we have a lot of good examples in NGOs, in um, innovative uh, regional centers, very new in, uh, in South Moravia in Plzen. It's, it's, uh, it is a very innovative way how to promote career guidance. So we have these good examples mainly. So please uh, read this book about national prizes of uh, national awards from the Czech Republic and you will see what is, what is very interesting in my country. Uh, but we have, for example, National Guidance Forum. I don't know if you have in your system in Serbia. National Guidance Forum, it is a cooperation between Ministry of Social Affairs and Ministry of Education and a lot of associations of guidance counselors in uh, higher education, association of guidance counselors in schools, and it is National Forum, and they are working together, uh, these uh, bodies, and they try to have, to have uh, some networking and to build system together a little bit. So we have this uh, platform. It's very useful. And Euroguidance try to support it, more developments, because it's a little bit formal and sleeping now. But we, uh, uh, we supported them and uh, we hope, it, we, we believe it is a very good tool to have a national guidance forum, and we have. Uh, we have also um, some portal, as you have in Serbia. It is portal about schools, about qualifications, portal about uh, occupations. We have so much databases and portals, very useful. But we have no e-guidance services around this portal. So also we are late a little bit because in Denmark, in France, blah, 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 in Sweden, they have um, thousands and thousands of e-guidance uh, clients each day. <laughs> and uh, it's so growing system in, in some countries. This e uh, around portals, it's also live people, which could you phone them, chat them, mail, email them, um, contact them somehow, and to, yes, to use um, interactively. We have just passive portal, so... We need to improve it, and it's the aim for Euroguidance for next year. Uh, so we have some problems. We have problems in schools because uh, we have the subject, it, the name is Word of the Work, and each week pupils from the 
from the elementary to secondary, maybe also, yeah, school, they have in curriculum this subject, but they are just try to cooking, to, to build something from the wood, and then to um, think about uh, how to how to create something uh, technical, it's a technical education, but there is no innovative ways of how, how, to, how to learn this subject. So it's not about career management skills, it's not about career learning, it's not about self-awareness. So we try to improve it, to, we, we need, we, we have to, because it's a trend in Europe, it's a very strong trend. Uh, career education from the nursery and kindergarten through the to, till university students. So still very uh, frequent, uh, deep career learning through all uh, through the system. So we need to improve this. We know. And um, the last thing is uh, that I would like to say that Euroguidance have a very important role, like in Serbia, uh, we we support it development of our national guidance system. For example, we have conference European in November. This is said, uh, we have all, uh, all stakeholders, all ministries, uh, also associations from uh, companies as a partners. Uh, uh, we have uh, all associations in career guidance in the Czech Republic, in Slovakia. So we have a lot of partners around the conference and it is in Charles University, and all experts from Czech Republic will be there. They will present what they do in career guidance, and also we have a European participation from uh, UK, Malta, Portugal, and, the, and very, very, good uh, very good speakers we will have in this conference. So it's our work as Euroguidance, how we try to change it, how, how we try to improve it, to put all people together in one place and uh, to push, push to developments in the, in the career guidance uh, system. So that's all. Thank you, Peter. And uh, to add, we'll, I hope we will have some of the awarded uh, from our competition, from our national awards, also participating at a conference like we talk at your conference in Prague. But now we really come close to Serbia, to our border. Actually, Agnes is from Seged, which is really a city at a Hungarian, you know, southernmost city on the border with Serbia. So uh, let's hear what's going on in the neighborhood. And also, it's called the City of Sunshine. So, if you want to have some sunshine, then come to come to Seged. Actually, I like these uh, meetings and uh, conferences because uh, we realize how many things we have in common, especially these Eastern Bloc countries. And I can I can join Petr in saying that, uh, for example, in Hungary, we do not have a unified lifelong guidance system but we have a system which is uh, fragmented. We have uh, several service providers, and also we do not have a national uh, body, only one national body which is responsible for uh, guidance and orientation or career management skills, but, they have di but we have different ministries, like the Ministry for National Economy is responsible for the labor market, and uh, the Ministry for Human Capacities is responsible for the public education, and we have another authority which is responsible for guidance in vocational education. So uh, it's difficult, it's a difficult situation. And uh, for this reason, in, in primary education and in public education, um, the situation is, is very strange because uh, career management skills is not a, is not a subject and there have been debates uh, about this and it has been uh, questioned uh, a lot of times. Uh, it should be part of the national core curriculum. Currently it is, uh, as I said, it's not a separate subject, but it is offered under the umbrella of life management skills and, and practical skills. And basically what it means is that it's usually the teacher who decides what time and how much time to devote to career management skills or career education. And usually uh, it is the form teachers in classes who are responsible for career, career management. 
and some, some schools do employ uh, psychologists or uh, career guidance uh, practitioners, but in most cases the schools and the teachers rely on external sources. And uh, we have four networks which they can rely on. We have the network of pedagogical uh, professional services. They are responsible for giving orientation and guidance for uh, primary school students. And uh, they also do testing, the testing of learning abilities, and they give advice on uh, choosing how to choose the, the right institution. And these counselors, for example, uh, go to schools, they visit schools and they give uh, career education lessons, but sometimes it's very difficult for them because the schools or the teachers are reluctant to give them enough time and for these, uh, for these courses you need time. And also we have the county government offices with labor departments and they are responsible for career management, for the development of career, career management skills uh, within the field of uh, labor, so they are responsible for job search and employment counseling. And in some labor departments, there are employment information offices, but it's not true for all the counties in Hungary. So, again, the system is not something uh, which is true for every county in Hungary, but in some cases there is a, such a center, in some cases there isn't. And in these employment information centers, uh, the clients can actually use different tools, they can uh, have, the, have access to computers, they can watch films, they can read descriptions of careers, and uh, they can talk to counselors as well. Uh, also we have the Chambers of Commerce, uh, which is very active in the field, but they mostly concentrate on, on skills shortages and uh, they concentrate on vocational orientation of different professions. And uh, two years ago, another network was established in Hungary in 2015, and that's the network of uh, vocational centers. And uh, there are 44 vocational centers in Hungary, and each of them is responsible for vocational schools and, uh, and uh, vocational training institutions in the neighborhood. And uh, in an ideal county, all these four uh, networks work together, they know each other, they are in contact with each other, and they organize joint programs. And uh, as we saw from the uh, National Career Guidance Award, we also have the NGOs, so these are the uh, main actors in the field. Thank you, Agnes, a lot. And from Seged, we go to Zagreb. And before I give word to uh, Mia Tretzol from uh, Euroguidance Center in Croatia, I'd like to remind the, 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 the dear colleagues that we, in the past uh, two conferences, we had uh, also presented some of the examples from Croatia. And our colleague Irena Bacilic presented uh, on two occasions uh, the new developments in Croatia. So let's now hear what's new uh, also from Mia. Okay. Dobar dan svima, pozdrav. I will continue in English, so uh, because we are an international group, so and in, to make most uh, <laughs> to um, ensure that uh, most of you understand me. So uh, okay, so the the situation in Croatia is the following. Uh, we like to divide uh, the provision of guidance into two categories, just for the sake of simplicity. But of course, these two areas uh, naturally cooperate and uh, de depend on each other. So uh, guidance is provided in, in the education sector and in the employment sector, of course. Uh, and also, I've, I've noticed many similarities between the Croatian system and the Hungarian system in particular, and uh, as Czech as well. So uh, there is no, um, in, in the education sector, um, there is no systematic approach to guidance provision and uh, it is provided in schools but mostly um, it depends on the enthusiasm and uh, um, yeah, of different teachers, psychologists who perceive it as important or, or less important to, to give to students. So uh, in the primary, uh, in primary and secondary schools, uh, guidance is provided by usually the non-teaching staff, such as uh, psychologists and pedagogues. Um, but also uh, recent efforts have 
recently efforts have been made uh, to include even teachers uh, because uh, all the research points to the fact that children form their opinions, their, their professional opinions uh, at, an, at a very early age uh, and uh, even uh, before the age of 10. So maybe it's uh, important even for the teachers to, to really get in touch with their, with their pupils, they know them best and uh, maybe they are also uh, very um, good, good uh, providers of guidance for students. Uh, also, uh, at university level, actually on, on the higher education level, um, recently uh, efforts have also been made to establish uh, university career centers. And uh, we have done, this has also been done in, in a non, not very systematic manner. So there are some university and some, uh, some universities and some faculties which have really, really good career centers, uh, whereas there are some which uh, are career centers only on paper, but uh, are, looking, are working towards establishing like really um, fully operating career centers. Uh, and uh, yeah, I can also um, maybe say that uh, I, I would agree with Petra who said uh, a lot of good stuff about uh, Career Center in Brno, uh, which is a really, uh, we, we went there on a, on a study visit and uh, we were really amazed by the work they do. Uh, it's really uh, um, like, it's incredible. It's, it's, it employs uh, almost 30 people and they do uh, really excellent stuff with, with guidance. So uh, not all is so uh, black in, in the Czech Republic. Um, and uh, also in adult education, there are a lot of adult education and training institutions providing uh, different vocational education programs, uh, retraining, uh, or even elementary and secondary uh, programs. Uh, okay, and in the, uh, in the employment sector, uh, we have, of course, the National Public Employment Service, uh, which provides uh, career guidance. And um, there are also, uh, let's say, some offshoots of, of this uh, big institution. They're called uh, CISOC uh, centers. Um, it's called, actually, Centers za Informiranje i Savjetovanje Karieri. So these are like uh, a smaller institutions, smaller, yeah, smaller institutions, which are div um, spread across Croatia. In, I think, now they have 11 or 12 uh, centers. Uh, which are very uh, user friendly. Everybody can get, it's like a, a youth or a career information center where uh, they organize workshops on different uh, topics uh, related to job search uh, and information on employment. Uh, so they are very open to uh, hosting students, pupils, the unemployed, etc. Whereas the public employment service uh, focuses more on the unemployed, long-term unemployed, or people with um, difficulties, with health difficulties or, or learning difficulties. And when it comes to people who provide guidance, uh, so I said in, in uh, the education sector, it's uh, either psychologists or pedagogues or other experts of education and rehabilitation profiles, sometimes teachers. Uh, and in the employment sector, it's mostly done by um, uh, psychologists uh, who are trained, uh, who receive further training in, in career guidance. So. Uh, yeah, and one more thing. Uh, I wanted to, uh, because I said that the employment and the education sector cooperate a lot, uh, and it's that the natural thing to do. Uh, we've also recently established the National Forum for Lifelong Guidance, uh, which is a, a forum which involves different stakeholders from the education sector, from the employment sector, from the ministries, uh, different institutions and agencies. And its task is to was to um, come up with a strategy uh, of lifelong guidance and career development for the period of from 2016 to 2020 and define more uh, efficient policy measures to uh, promote guidance and counseling in, in education and development. So that will be it. Thank you, Mia, very much. Uh, in the past two days, uh, as I repeatedly told you, we had a cross-border seminar and the theme of this uh, cross-border seminar was guidance 4.0. Uh, new uh, innovative practices for new skills. So we talked a lot about uh, the use of ICT in guidance and how it can uh, 
further help develop the systems. So maybe it would be interesting to hear from somebody, for example, to hear from Maria uh, Yashova, how is there e-guidance provision in Slovakia? Are there some national portals or what kind of information they provide and to whom? Okay, thank you for the work, Degen. Uh, I would li like to ask you for the, yeah, you already seen this front page of our uh, from our internet website uh, uh, during my pre uh, presentation of the guidance system. Uh, this is a website called Composite. It's a, uh, it, was a, it is a product uh, that was developed under the national project. It's an inf information system. And uh, during the past two days, during the conference, uh, Jana Ketunen, she presented uh, a model um, uh, how can ICT be used uh, in career guidance? And there are, she presented more levels, and one level is uh, uh, using ICT as, uh, as a information tool, and then there is a, a level where uh, the ICT can be used for e-guidance, and then there is a upper level where uh, uh, guidance should be organized in a very different way, like a new paradigm uh, should be uh, implemented in the ICD. But this portal, as you uh, that I will present, is uh, on the first first two levels. Like it's a, it's an information portal, and there are some interactive uh, tools that can be used. But uh, truly, it's not an um, e-guidance tool. It's a more information tool. It's, uh, I, uh, as you can see uh, here, there are some, uh, some uh, uh, elements that you can see. Here, this is, uh, inf these are the basic information about this uh, um, internet site. And here is a part that is dedicated for professionals. Uh, here, here is, a, for example, ch chapter about uh, students or pupils with uh, specific, spe uh, special educational needs. Then there is a, a part about psychological um, activities. And here, here is a part about career guidance. When I click on this career guidance, there are some more chapters. Uh, here is a part about career guidance in schools, and uh, you can see there are another more chapters. And these chapters uh, are filled, uh, for example, with articles, uh, professional uh, uh, um, for example, publications. Uh, here is, for example, part about uh, career guidance uh, programs that uh, for uh, pupils. So when you cl uh, click on this, you will find a publication that was made uh, or that is dedicated to this uh, topic. Uh, so that, that was, th this part is for pro professionals. But there, here is another part of, the, uh, of this internet site, and this is dedicated to uh, parents, and they can also find some interesting information. For example, here are uh, some uh, inf information about, uh, edu uh, about uh, raising up children and families. Uh, there, here is also part that is dedicated to uh, choosing the career for the, for the child. It's called where to the school. Um, and, and there are some other parts uh, for, that are also um, dedicated to care guidance. For example, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Craft has a golden bottom. I don't know if it is tra transferable to uh, other language, but it's about how to choose the vocational education training for uh, the uh, children. And here's also a part uh, of this uh, internet site that is uh, dedicated to pupils or students. And uh, here's a part about what I want to be. Uh, here are some uh, stories uh, about uh, vocations, uh, and uh, what I wanted to show you uh, is this uh, part that is interactive, that are not only information that, uh, that should be read, but also something that uh, the children can, our pupils can do by themselves. And these are some games for, uh, for the times of rest, it's called. And when you click on this, 
you will find here some uh, uh, some games or uh, interactive parts. This one is called, for example, traffic lights, uh, and uh, I can show you. It's it's very simple, uh, but uh, uh, it is the the one that is the most used from this website. Uh, you have to choose whether you are a male or a female. I have just chosen that I'm a male. <laughs> uh, uh, here you can choose how old are you. Okay, 10 years old. Uh, I live in Bratislava and I choose that I'm a, a primary school pupil in fifth grade. And then I can click on this. And uh, this game uh, is uh, supposed to... Uh, choose a, a career type and you are what career type are you so here are some uh, uh, some uh, statements and you have to decide whether you agree with it then you click on the green light but whether you are not quite sure so that's the orange light and when you completely disagree with this statement you click on the red light and when you uh, continue for, uh, and you uh, fill up all the uh, questions then you find out which career type are you and uh, there is also an output that you can print from it and uh, so that's it and and there's also one uh, one project I would like to talk about that was uh, in our uh, this year's uh, national award it was one entry about it's a private project and it's called work navigator and it's a uh, also an interactive website it's, that is more e-guidance. Uh, uh, it's, um, it's a website that employs the uh, uh, approach that, is, uh, that was made up by a, a career guidance counselor called Thomas Diener. I don't know whether you are familiar with this guy. And he uh, he made up his own approach that is more qualitative and more um, uh, dynamic and at the psychometric type of career guidance. And this uh, work navigator site employs this approach uh, into, into the e-guidance. And uh, this, uh, this is only a pilot project and uh, results are, we, we don't have the results yet, but it looks really interesting. So that are our, uh, that are some projects that I wanted to tell you about. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And talking of e-guidance and uh, portals, maybe we can have a short follow-up uh, from Croatia. You can just uh, give us the info of what has been developed recently in, in Croatia shortly. Okay, so I will try to be really brief because lunch is approaching and uh, yeah, uh, and I think you can really use all of these resources yourselves as well because um, I, I guess the language is quite familiar. So this is something, it's called Eusmiravanje or e-guidance uh, and it's been developed by the Public uh, Employment Service and this is maybe the most something that's most interesting for us because it's very user-friendly, it's very colorful and attractive visually. Uh, so it's a guidance portal which gives, first of all, you can see here, really tailored information uh, on job search and, uh, and education for different uh, groups of people. So uh, the pupils, the students, um, the unemployed and people who are employed but maybe are looking for a change of career or, or some other uh, career opportunities. So uh, they give like really maybe some important information uh, worth conserving when, when um, applying for a new job or uh, deciding on, on different new career opportunities. Uh, then uh, there are also some video advice uh, on how to uh, use the portal, but also how to write a CV, how to write a resume, how to behave uh, on a job interview. So it's, uh, I think, something that's very uh, useful for, for young people who don't really know this stuff. Uh, also, uh, there is a, a questionnaire of interests and competencies, which... Uh, 
the students can uh, can take. Okay, so there is a lot of um, information that you need to enter to start the, the whole uh, questionnaire, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, but basically you get uh, some pictures of different professions or you get um, descriptions uh, whether you would like to do something with your hands, whether you would like to uh, do something with mechanics and then students decide whether or not they agree with this. Uh, and in the end they have like um, uh, some suggestions on which professions would be suitable for them. So uh, that's also uh, quite interesting and see uh, here are the different videos on, on how to behave in certain job search uh, situations. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, and it's got uh, information on different occupations. So, uh, because students are sometimes not really familiar with uh, what all all of the aspects that a certain job uh, implies, so they're mostly focused on the most attractive part of a, of a certain profession. So, uh, here they can find out what it really means to be a lawyer or uh, or a surgeon or um, yeah, some some jobs that are they are not maybe familiar with completely. So this is one. Uh, another thing is uh, uh, these are different um, again questionnaires and uh, interesting maybe uh, things to, to do uh, for students who are again uh, not very familiar with different professions or uh, don't know don't know, cannot recognize and define their interests and competencies to do uh, a certain job. So this one is in Croatian, but there is also uh, an English version of the whole thing. Uh, and then finally, uh, we need to uh, mention your guidance as well. So this is uh, an e-manual, uh, which is called um, Introduction into Guidance. Uh, and it's been uh, like a summary of our seminars that we have developed for, uh, for primary and secondary schools, to, um, teachers, uh, psychologists and pedagogues. And since not all of them were able to participate in many of our seminars, because some live in, in different parts of Croatia, we wanted to uh, summarize it all into a manual. Of course, we couldn't really do it because, um, yeah, you can't really replicate a live seminar into a book. But still, it's, that's why it's called Introduction into Guidance. Uh, but still, there are some um, interesting things to know about uh, different stages of, of professional development of students. Uh, and maybe uh, some activities that uh, teachers and psychologists can do uh, with the pupils. So yeah, I'm trying to find that. So uh, for different uh, parts of the of the curriculum, for example, in the in the Croatian language, then in foreign languages, then in maths, uh, and in um, scientific science and technical uh, subjects. So uh, again, yeah, very practical practical uh, suggestions on what to do uh, with the students. So uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. And uh, we've seen some examples of services, and uh, I think it's really important not only to provide services, but also to promote it and to promote guidance as such. And in Hungary, they have a really interesting event and really interesting initiative that I think would be rather interesting also to, to have in Serbia. So maybe it's an idea for the you know future years. But I would like to invite Agnes to, to share what's going on with the night of careers uh, yes actually um, one of the um, best projects that we found last year in the hungarian guidance award is the night of professions i don't know if you in serbia have these night type of events like the night of researchers the night of museums so it's something like that but it is for vocational schools and the, the basic idea is that these schools remain open after dark. And uh, not, not only vocational uh, schools, but also training institutions. And they show what uh, the students and also secondary school students or adults can do with different professions. So basically, it's orientation. It's targeted to, uh, to the age group of uh, 11 to 13-year-old students, but also bigger students are, are welcome as well. 
this night of profession was organized for the first time in Hungary last year, and uh, since that there have been two editions, and it has become very, very popular. The, also, the, the students and the teachers and the parents uh, liked it very much. And uh, it, it was very interesting because it started as a local event in Szeged, but so many vocational education institutions wanted to join that it grew into a national event right before the start. And uh, it has become the biggest national event on, on orientation and guidance in, in Hungary, actually. Uh, there is no central venue for this, but you will find uh, vocational schools all around the country, which are open during the night. And uh, both last year and also this year, the number of visitors reached uh, around 45,000 people. So we can say that that's a huge number. And also, this year was very interesting because it somehow became a cross-border event as well. Uh, you might know that uh, we have Hungarian minorities living in, in all around Hungary. And uh, this year, uh, students from uh, Slovakia, Romania, Ukraine, and also from Serbia traveled to Hungary to visit uh, these events. And also in three venues, two, in two schools in Romania and also one school in Serbia. In the, in the town named Ada. I don't know if you... Ada. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the technical school uh, organized locally, event locally. So it's going to continue uh, next year as well, hopefully, and uh, we'll uh, attract more and more people. And also, if you are interested, the project owner is here. So if you want to talk to him how to organize it, then you should uh, meet David, my colleague, or one of my colleagues. And uh, also, I would like to just mention another uh, interesting uh, initiative in Hungary, which is, and also uh, the participants of the cross-border seminar could meet Erika Juhász, and uh, she introduced, or she's doing biblio guidance or bibliotherapy in Hungary, which means that uh, she uses uh, literary, te literary texts uh, in uh, career management or career development. So it's a quite an interesting initiative. And now it's built into college curriculum. So that was another initiative which we found during the Hungarian Guidance Award last year. Thank you very much. And <clears throat> it would actually be really interesting to maybe organize uh, another seminar with the bibliography theme because I, I am sure that many of the practitioners here would uh, like it really much. And uh, I know that uh, a lot of people here are actually teachers or counselors in schools, members of school teams for uh, career guidance. And actually last week we were in Tallinn at the Euroguidance Network meeting and we had this activity where we planned the future study visits and future cross-borders and uh, it was moderated by Mia and then uh, Petra and, I and myself found ourselves in the same group and we were talking, okay, what can be interesting study visits that we can organize and Petra and I realized that we both have career guidance themes in schools and that can really be an interesting uh, study visit for guidance practitioners for teachers and counselors from schools from one country to see how it's done in Czech Republic and vice versa. So uh, at this point I would like, I thought it would be nice to for Petr to say a couple of words of how the teams are organized in Czech Republic and we can maybe see if there are similarities or maybe some differences and you know, we can compare and maybe in the future we can really make that, that study visit. Okay, thank you. It's a, it's a surprise, this question for me, but, <laughs> yes. but I, I am good, I, I, I can go. I'm using the, the teacher <laughs> mode, like. Okay, so yes, we have, we, have, um, we have some trend now. I am not sure if it's official policy, a little bit, yes, that we have uh, something like school team, school counseling teams or school counseling centers. So in many schools, I think it was founded by European Social Fund somehow, and now is improving in some schools, in some schools not so much. 
but a lot of schools has a, something like a career coordinator, or this is a very, very innovative approach across the world, that uh, you have something like career coordination of all activities in school, because during a lot of uh, school life, there is some career topics in, in education. And if you have career coordinator or career um, facilitator or something, how, how to say it? So you can, uh, you can have a lot of different activities in the school which are aimed to prepare pupils to career. Involved parents, involved employers, involved communities, uh, involved teachers. So this is the idea that uh, the team is, uh, for example, teachers of the uh, personal development skills, teachers of the world of the work. As I said, that it's not it's a little bit boring subject, but uh, but they are in team and psychologists and special need teachers. Uh, it's very very important part of the team, and they are working together because it's important to, to support each other. I worked as guidance counselor in school five years, and I was also center, school center, but I was alone, the school center, just one person. And it was crazy because the teachers, are, they are not able to understand uh, because it's a little bit different approach. If you are counseling, it's a different process of relationship that they are teaching. So uh, it's important to support these teams could support each other to, to improve uh, counseling services in school and to, to have a more potential to, to have a priority as a career guidance because uh, sometimes we, we forgot to, to do this because we just counseling to, to, to pupils with special needs or with some problems, disabilities, and we we are we have a lot of work, a lot of administration because it it took, it's, it means some money and, and and a lot of papers, a lot of tests and diagnostic from our educational psychological uh, centers. We have also the system. Sorry, I, I I didn't mean it. So it's a lot of papers and not so much time for career guidance in in our school. So we hope that these school teams, if we will improve it together with Serbia with some study visit. So we hope that uh, there could be more potential, more capacity in these teams uh, for career guidance because we, we have a European social fund still and we have a huge project which one priority is also career guidance and we hope that it, uh, it, it could be improved through these teams. So it's, it's just it's the example, and I, I think we can learn because we, we are still in the beginning. It's a few years, and it's it's sometimes it's more developing. We, if we have money from European Social Fund, and then then it stop a little bit, and then we have another money from European Social Fund. But it's not so black in the Czech Republic. No. Thank you, Peter. And uh, we, we started our journey, our first set of questions uh, through, through guidance in Europe from Portugal. So it's good to, to end the second round of questions again in Portugal. And uh, I know that uh, my colleagues from Portugal have really some interesting uh, practices to, to, to show us. Uh, and uh, maybe you can show us some practice that you, you, you would like to highlight. Or maybe you can tell us a bit of... Uh, maybe how uh, guidance practitioners are trained in your country, because I think it's also an important question that we can learn from, yeah. Okay. Since four years ago, on-job training for psychologists, school psychologists, are doing online. Be learning each year, they can choose one course on B learning base. These courses are 21 hours. Seven of them are presential and the other 14 are online. At the end of the course, they have um, a certification and the certification are accredited by our order of psychology. This certification is very important to the 
career of a psychologist in my country. It's why these courses are also important. We invited, uh, we in the Ministry of Education in uh, Euro Guidance Center invited career counselors from PACE and from um, uh, the social sector to join also the, um, the course. They can also attend the course and it's one way to, to foster the cooperation between sectors also. I will only mention some contents of this course. One of them is online guidance to prepare our career counselors to use these new tools. Uh, guidance on VET system and uh, also guidance in the mobility. We have more content, but uh, these three are the more expressive. Uh, only about training. Uh, this year we will put more 14 hours in this training course to, to allow the um, supervision. The, the courses are very practical are a very practical way. They can develop some programs or tools to work on guidance with students or unemployed. But if there isn't a, a, a follow-up, we don't know what happened and it is important to understand how they use the the contents they have learned in training course. So in this year, since this year, they will have more 14 hours to supervision the implementation of uh, the tools and the, the knowledge they have learned in the course. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, if we another, oh. Another good practice, it's possible to speak, yeah. okay? Another, <laughs> another good practice that we consider a good practice in my country, it's, it's also another way to foster the cooperation uh, among uh, sectors, was this um, framework uh, on career management skills in 2010 in the context of ELGPN. Ministry of Education, Public Employment Service in the one university, the University of Psychology in Lisbon, developed a common frame, career management skills framework. We identify six uh, competencies that should be or could be um, developed and for, for each one four levels of achievement. We don't have time to see this in more detail, but from each one of these competencies, if from each level, we define tools, activities, and learning outcomes. Uh, these uh, career management skills could be used in schools, in universities and in public employment service is the the great um, uh, aim is to is a, a wide um, uh, it is we could beginning this work in schools and could be finished in public employment service or in the university it's possible it allows us the portability the work be in one sector to other sector. If some of you are interested to know more about our career management skills, we can send more information by email or we can speak a little bit in the, bre the break, okay? Thank you very much. <laughs> we can add this to the materials from the conference so you, you could uh, see this in more details and actually my list of questions is rather long 
I have more questions for you guys. But uh, I think since we are nearing at lunch and have maybe opportunity for one question or two more, uh, I thought it would be nice for me as a host to, to give the audience a chance if you want to ask our dear guests uh, some question. If you want, you can just raise your hand and ask the question in either English or Serbian. And if you don't, I, I, I have more questions for people, but maybe, okay, so we don't have at the moment. Uh, maybe for the, the, the last one, maybe if uh, any of you have another practice, you would really like, okay, we have a question from <laughs> representative of the ministry. Ja se izvinjavam, ali bio si daleko, nisam videla da je mikrofon ovde. Mene znate da se ne predstavljam ponovo. Mene zanima i to je govorio kolega koji je sad sa ove strane, ali možete i vi odatle, učešće roditelja. Znači ono što sam ja susrela u svom poslu, znači ja se bavim upisom. Taj deo priče jako dugo radimo, mi imamo elektronski upis, ali se bavimo posle i posledicama upisa. I negde u silnim olbama koje stižu nakon neuspele željene škole, učenici, odnosno najčešće roditelji se javljaju dopisima, ali i telefonima i dolaze do nas i shvatam da oni koji nisu uspeli da se upišu razlog je u tome što čini mi se roditelji imaju prevelike očekivanja, prevelike želje nikako da se usklade sa onim što su mogućnosti dece. Ako vi znate da vam je dete osvarilo recimo 60 bodova, a napišete 20 želja gde su sve te želje minimum 80 bodova i dete se ni ne upiše u prvom krugu, onda vam je potpuno jasno da tu nije učestvovala dete u odabiru nego sam roditelj. Znači, mene zanima kako uključujete roditelje i kako njih angažujete u celoj ovoj priči o karijernom vođenju, jer čini mi se bez njih nije moguće sve dobro uraditi i ostvariti upis u željenu školu, recimo. Hvala. So, it's the involvement of parents, so Helia would like to answer. This issue is also an important issue to us, and we can speak a little bit about this. In the Ministry of Education, we developed a booklet about guidance and parents, the role of the parents in the guidance process. And this booklet has a wide distribution in schools and all over the world. Another way to involve parents is um, as a new, um, now is a study, but is a program developed by the University of Algarve that try to improve the, um, the engagement of parents in the guidance process. Um, my colleague uh, of, uh, that uh, developed these studies here with us, if you want, they can speak a little bit about this. But we, uh, but we have also another strategy, and uh, it was to develop some tools as games that could be play by students, with parents, with teachers, and this is for, <laughs> for children with four or five years. Parents can play with children. Um, in, we have a lot of occupations, and there is a, a game. This game has also um, two levels of difficulty. And if it's a girl, they can hear a girl speak about the occupation. And if it is a boy, they can hear a boy to speak about the occupation. 
Uh, we have in all these games a small questionnaire, and um, we can say that this improved the engagement or the involvement of parents in in the um, guidance process. We all only want to show one more to children a little bit more older. As João mentioned, guidance is a provider in all levels of schools. It's why our concern to have tools to all ages. This is for children with eight or nine. They can choose uh, uh, two or three or four different occupations, and now they have to find the tools. As the other, they can also hear the, um, the some information about the occupation, and the parents like very much this um, this tool. Can I? Yes, João will has. I just uh, briefly because otherwise Marco will prohibit me for lunch to get lunch. Um, it's a. Uh, 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 we talked about parents, but uh, uh, in neuroguidance uh, we we provide uh, tools. Oh, there is no internet connection. Well, it's okay. We we open the student section, but we have a parents uh, section and a practitioners section. And uh, in the parents section, uh, you, uh, we we have a, a small booklet that is called the role of parents in guidance. Uh, we also developed the role of teachers in guidance, the role of students in guidance, uh, and the role uh, of uh, psychologists in, <laughs> in guidance. So we use um, the, the budget uh, that we have to, to promote lifelong guidance uh, through, um, not only through, uh, or, or by giving um, that the, the practitioners, the tools, uh, we include parents uh, and we look at uh, the students and the teachers uh, as uh, important, uh, important partners. And uh, like I mentioned in the beginning, uh, in Portugal, to have uh, multi-tier intervention in schools, uh, it uh, enables you to, instead of working uh, mostly direct, uh, directly with students, you will work more with parents and um, above all with teachers and they then work directly with students. Thank you very much and uh, I would I would really now like to, to thank uh, or, all, or my colleagues uh, for taking us on this journey throughout Europe, throughout the guidance in Europe. In a way you were our guides to Europe, so you provided some sort of guidance to us today. Uh, and thank you very much. And now we have uh, had a lot of food for thought, I, I believe, in this session. You have heard so many inspiring examples of best practices. And now we can uh, now let all these informa this information uh, sit somewhere and uh, have some real food as well and to get some more energy because after the break we will also have uh, really interesting topics. Uh, we will talk more about the situation in Serbia after the break. So now we have the lunch. The lunch be will be served in the main restaurant near the entrance. So, and we will continue at 3 uh, p.m. sharp. Dakle, uh, ručak je u glavnom restoranu kod ulaza u hotel i nastavljamo u tri sata. Hvala puno. <laughs>